The Aussies really do get shafted when it comes to PC components. I mean, like, seriously, some of these prices are extortionately high. Almost criminal. F*** man. Anyway, I was requested to do a $1,000 PC for my Australian viewers, and it might just be what you're looking for. Stay tuned. Greetings everyone, my name is Proto, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over a 1000 Australian dollar PC that will focus on high FPS gaming at 1080p and even 1440p for that matter. 4K is an option, but unless you crank down the settings, you're going to be looking at about 30 to 40 FPS in a lot of modern AAA titles. But it should be noted that this PC will still comfortably edit and livestream, though it's not ideal if that's your primary purpose. But enough chit chat, I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. And so first things first, starting with the CPU of the Intel Core i5-6500 3.2GHz quad-core processor, costing $270. While you may ask, well, gaming utilizes the GPU much more than the CPU, so hyper-threading that the i7s provide will only marginally boost your FPS, but for the price, those couple of extra frames really aren't worth it. This CPU is a quad-core running at a base clock of 3.2GHz and a boost of 3.6GHz. This is more than enough for games, the CPU won't bottleneck the GPU, so there's no problem there, and also, the fact that it's got 4 cores will definitely help when you're streaming or rendering. It will allow you to do these tasks much more comfortably, with much lower FPS loss when you're doing it simultaneously, than say an i3 or a Pentium that we had last week. Now unfortunately, overclocking isn't going to be an option on the CPU, due to both the CPU and motherboard combo. One awesome thing though, is the CPU architecture, and the socket it uses. So because it's on the LG 11 view on socket, it means that you won't have a problem upgrading the CPU in a couple of years if you decide you want to go with KB Lake or Skylake i7s to get more into heavy video editing or streaming. Now this will prevent you from having to buy another motherboard which uses a different socket when in years you might want to upgrade and yeah this will save you some money. Good stuff. Now for the CPU cooler we have the Cryorig M9i 48.4 CFM CPU cooler costing $35. Now I know, I know, generally people don't tend to buy aftermarket coolers for non-overclockable CPUs, but I made an exception. This build is not only less than $1000, but I also had some money left over, so for this price, you're going to be getting a really good CPU cooler, which will allow it to turbo much more consistently, that is the CPU. The temps of the CPU also dropped down and stay much lower during gaming, whereas going with this cooler also means that it will be considerably quieter. Now the Hyper 212, which is, you know, a highly commended CPU cooler and also pretty cheap in other countries, was nearly double this price, and honestly, for the price itself, the Cryo cooler will do an exceptional job. Now for the mobile one, the Asus H110M E D3 MATX LG1151 motherboard, and it's one of the cheapest boards using the socket at $74, and has all of the same features that all the $90 boards have as well. Now it's not an awful lot to say about this board since it is nothing special, but this does have 4 SATA 6 per second ports, so you can connect up to 4 drives just off of SATA alone. It has 2 DIMM slots supporting up to 32 gigs of DDR3 memory, with max speeds of 1866MHz. And that's, well you know, nothing special really, it's not great but it will be plenty for our purposes. Internal I.O. you have both USB 2.0 and 3.0, and well for back panel I.O. you have 2 PS2 ports, 1 LAN port, 2 USB 3.0 ports, and 4 USB 2.0 ports. Oh yeah, an onboard sound, meaning you won't have to buy a separate sound card. Now for RAM we have the Corsair 8GB DDR3 1600MHz, costing $36. Yes, you heard that right, we're using DDR3 memory. Some motherboards that support Skylake chips do allow for DDR3 memory, and this is one of them. It'll save us money, one 8GB stick is enough for gaming and will be for a considerable amount of time as well, and going with one stick over two will also allow you to add another module in the future, giving you a total of 16 GB if you decide that's the route you want to go. This RAM isn't special and certainly doesn't look futuristic, but I have to pay 20 more bucks just for some heat spreaders, which as you can tell really isn't worth it. Yeah, no thanks. Now for storage, we have both an SSD and a hard drive. So starting with the SSD, we have the OCZ Tron 100 240GB 2.5 inch solid state drive, costing $64. Now SSDs are much faster than hard drives, with a compromise of capacity for the same price. A 240GB SSD is enough for most people and will allow you to install Windows, your favourite programs and some 1 or 2 AAA games onto it. This will decrease boot times and loading times though and won't affect your FPS. Now for the hard drive you have the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive costing $65. Now this will be a mass storage solution for the rest of your games, all of your videos, music and other files as well. This combo of an SSD and a HD 
will save you a lot of money and still provide the best of both worlds, so to speak. And now for the awesome source, the GPU. For 376 Australian dollars, you can get the Asus GeForce GTX 980 Ti 6-byte video card. And damn, I mean seriously, for the price of an RX 480, you're getting all of the NVIDIA features with the performance of a GTX 1070 really for about half the cost. This is the same type of GPU I have in my rig and personally, for the price, you need to buy this quickly before it actually sells out if you're looking to buy a GPU under $400. Now I do believe that this is the RG Matrix which not only looks fucking exceptional, but it also has a few things you should know. Once overclocked, this thing should be within the performance of a GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. 60 bytes of VRAM should be enough even at 4K and the base clock of the GPU is 1216MHz, which you should be able to easily overclock to 1500MHz to give you a lot more FPS. This card takes up 2.5 expansion slots because of the beefy cooler, but my god you're going to have the best experience ever for that price. And it looks really badass with its clean colour scheme and slit looking backplate. This card has 1 HDMI, 1 DVI and 3 DisplayPort connections as well. In regards to Nvidia features though, the two most popular features are probably CUDA and Shadowplay. Now CUDA will do the GPU acceleration within things like video editing and streaming. So that will make the entire post-production process a lot faster and smoother. Without GPU acceleration, everything takes a whole lot longer. Now as an example of this, for me, an After Effects composition with a 5820K to say render a 4K clip with a denoiser effect on it would take say an hour or two, probably an hour. But alternatively with GPU acceleration, the same clip would only take about 20 to 30 minutes at the max. I've even seen far better results in Premiere. Shadow Play, on the other hand, allows you to record gameplay on your PC with minimal loss in frames. We're talking like 0 to 1 at max, genuinely. You can record games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K with the ability to record at extremely high bit rates. A feature that I use basically all the time is the Shadow Record feature, which works much like the Elgato Time Shift feature. It's a very excellent piece of software and benchmarks for this card are down in the description below. Now for the case of the Corsair 350D Micro ATX PC case costing $24. Now for this price the case is excellent, unless you have two 2.5 inch bays for SSDs and two 3.5 inch bays for regular hard drives. It also has two 5 and a quarter inch bays for things like a hot swap bay, Blu-ray disk drive, and plenty more. There's also a lot of space within this case with solid construction. It however doesn't have a windowed side panel, but has room for a 240mm radiator either in the front or above. In terms of our build, this obviously wouldn't be very useful, but if you're using it for something else, this case is pretty sweet. Lastly, we have the power supply. Now for this, I did decide to go with the Antec High Current Gamer 520 watt, not 420, 80 plus bronze certified power supply costing $31. Before the PSU market was dominated by Seasonic, EVGA and Corsair, Antec held that position. This PSU is really reliable with quality components, especially when you consider that it's still cheaper than the budget EVGA PSU ones. And well, I can't complain. I think you are going to be pushing it in terms of wattage, though you still will be under by about like 430 watts I'm pretty sure it is. So if you want to have a more flexible overclocking experience, go with something like a 650 watt PSU. But yeah, this is a good model with two 8-pin connectors for the GPU. How convenient. So the 980i also has two 8-pin connectors. But yeah, it's a pretty solid PSU. <laughs> Gamefly.com has over 8,000 new releases and classics available to rent for the Xbox One, PS4, and a bunch of other systems. As a Gamefly member, you can rent even the newest release such as Doom, and upcoming titles such as BF1, Titanfall 2, and Infinite Warfare for a low monthly fee. If you like a game so much you don't want to send it back, you can keep it for a low use price, and there are never due dates or late fees. Gamefly is great for playing single player driven games, as you can just rent them for a fraction of the price, and then just return them. Sign up for a premium free 30 day trial using my affiliate link down in the description below. Anyway guys, that wraps up our 1000 Australian dollar build, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and share this video if you found it helpful, that way I can reach a larger audience which really does help me out. The relevant links are in the description and benchmarks as well. And if you've got any suggestions for future videos, drop those also in the comments down below or just tweet at me. It's probably the easier method. Thanks for watching. This has been Proto and until next week, adios. Hyper-threading games. Hyper-threading games. Wow, okay.